Aussie gamers and honorary Aussie gamers from around the world, welcome to episode 108. Today is Thursday the 17th of December 2015 and you're listening to the Aussie Gamers Express podcast. The podcast that is wishing all of our friends, family and community members a happy, safe and merry festive season. I am your host Luke One and joining me this week is my good friend Thorncliffe. How are you? I am very well. That's a lie. You told me earlier that you were feeling like shit. You sound like yeah, shit. Was... A piece of shit. Happy birthday. Happy <laughs> Christmas. Merry everything. Also joining us this point is our other great friend, Red. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm brilliant. Oh, we don't have Red this week. We've got Santa Red. <laughs> Dick claws. <laughs> you haven't got your beard anymore. Oh, not up top anyway. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Righty, oh, that's disgusting, fantastic. Before we start, here's this week's shot and preview. First up, we'll have Game Talk, then we're going to the news. And in this week's news, we've got some pretty cool stuff for this time of year. Star Wars 1313 Revival. Hideo Kojima and Sony in talks. Unravel release date, Bungie and their new rip-off. DDoS and This Christmas Time. Dark Souls 3 Prestige Edition. After the news, what's that sound in Rapid Fire Quiz, which is the final for this year and is a tiebreaker between Sean and Red, so that'll be exciting. Sean will do a must-play games this week with a little bit of a PlayStation twist, then Red will give us a shout. That'll be the final one for the year. We'll close the show and no doubt message, message, wish all you guys a very safe and happy Christmas. For now, let's go into my game talk. Uh, I've played a few games this week. Most of the uh, of my time has been spent uh, spending a, a, a lot of time in the wasteland playing Fallout 4. Still, as much as it's uh, it's got to the point uh, where there's not a lot fun left to do. Would you ever even thought that I would have got to a point in a Fallout game where there wasn't much left to do, Red? No, not really. I'm not surprised you made it past level 10. Yeah, but so am I. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people are very surprised, but uh, there's still missions to do, but it feels like they're just repeating themselves and going on a loop now. They do. Yeah, it's sort of, uh, like they're there just so you can do something and get XP and all that sort of stuff, but it's just saying, like, they're all just Minutemen stuff, because that's who I'm, I'm with. And yeah, they just... can get harder. Yeah, yeah, they do, that ramps up and stuff, like, go here and, and help out, come back. You've got you go back you go and you help a settler, right? Mm-hmm. Then you go do the mission. Then you've got to go back and tell the settler that you've you've helped them. And then you <laughs> go back and tell Garvey that you've finished it as well. Preston Garvey, you're like, fucking just send him a message. Just tell him. <laughs> Why do I have to go and tell two people that I fucked some shit up and uh, to to get my uh, XP and and caps? But anyway, uh, that's I've been doing that. Ba- basically, chasing trophies now. So, Probably like, one thing I could suggest you could do. What's that? I know of about half a dozen. There's half a dozen things on them to do, but they aren't actually on your mini map or on your map. So you might just want to Google some hidden places that different dungeons and stuff to go crawling. Oh, and every now and then I just go for um, a good old fashioned spelunk where I just walk around and just find new stuff. And that's and you do. It's as much as. I've got shitloads of stuff up on my mini map. I still run into new places. I, it's, I, I haven't uh, discovered everything, but I've just done pretty much all of the the missions. Um, but yeah, it's it's still enjoyable. But as I was going to say, I think I'm up to level 43 now. Fit level 50 is a a trophy, and I'm um, still working towards uh, the settlement trophy, getting them all happy. Oh, I banged my misses. Um, Yay! Uh, Smash and Piper. That's easy, isn't it? It's yeah, it was a, it was a <laughs> super romantic moment when that po- po- that when the trophy popped, uh, along with her cherry. It was uh, right next to a massive like Goliath thing that I just murdered, and <laughs> and, and the like little conversation kicked off where we were like getting all flirty and stuff. And Piper was, like, standing inside this blub, like, big, fat, blubbering green mess on the ground that I'd just killed. So it was very romantic for her to stand in that and tell me her feelings about how she loves me and stuff like that. (laughs) It was a a great moment. 
Uh, but yeah, so I uh, played Fallout 4. I've been putting a, a lot of time into that. I played a little bit of Star Wars Battlefront. That I can only play that in small doses before I get the shits because I just get my ass cane. So, great game, but still pretty hard to sort of um, be competitive in. But anyway, we can blame my internet for now. Uh, I've got a big announcement for this week. For my final show of the year, I thought I'd go out with a bang. What do you do? Went and got myself a platinum trophy. Ooh, telltale. Tales from the Borderlands. I finished off. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at, Red? Because if, if Sean had said, I got a platinum, I went, Lego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you only said telltale because you knew I was in the midst of playing it. Well, I because I would have heard about your Fallout because I'm I'm half expecting either you or Jason to soon pop up and go finally got the the Fallout Four Platinum because you deserve it with the amount of time that you've spent on it. But other than that, yes, that'll be for next year. I'm um, I'm probably going to give myself a a bit of a um, a goal for the end of 2016. I'm going to have 20 platinums up by the end of next year, which is another three. So if I can get three platinums in. In 12 months, that'll be that'll be great. But uh, yeah, Fallout will definitely be next year. It's a massive grind. Yeah. So, no, Tales from the Borderlands. I, I finished that off a couple of days ago, and um, I was well pleased with the outcome. That is uh, the by and far... Oh, I was going to say it's the best tell, uh, tell, the Telltale game that I've played, but pretty hard to beat the very first uh, Walking Dead but it's damn near the top, it is a fantastic game, Tales from the Borderlands and I first, I played the first episode before I even properly played a Borderlands, <laughs> Borderlands game <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. that so I didn't know any of the characters, I didn't know any of the references, but I still loved it, I thought episode 1 was amazing in playing episode 2, 3, 4, and 5, I've smashed the hell out of Borderlands 2 and played a little bit of the pre-sequel before that. So in playing the majority of the game, I knew the game and, and, is, and I'm a fan. And um, yeah, it turned out really well. It was, it felt like in playing that game, I would believe it if it was said that the, the developers of Borderlands made that game in its entirety and it wasn't a, a telltale adaptation. Because it was in collaboration with uh, Gearbox Software and 2K. But brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The characters are fantastic. The new ones like Reese and the uh, the older ones that we all know of, like uh, Handsome Jack, fantastic. Their portrayal of those characters are brilliant, second to none. And uh, a whole bunch of other characters that we also know from the uh, the Borderlands games, like uh, Mordecai's in there. Uh, there's Janie Springs. Tiny uh, Tina? No, no, she doesn't make an appearance. Uh, but uh, Brick, I think he's in there for a bit. Uh, Zero is in there. There's there's quite a few, and they play more than just uh, like cameos as well. They're actually in there for a bit, which is which is really good. Brilliant game. I, I'd give it a ten out of ten. It would have made my ten, uh, sorry, top ten games of the year had I'd finished it by um, by the time we recorded that show. So unfortunately, it didn't make it for that reason. Uh, moving on, Red Game without a great name. Well, if you ask Red, it's got a fantastic name, isn't that right? Fucking a. <laughs> <laughs> that game is hard and a big pain in the ass, but it's simple and quite good and addictive. Um, the art style looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's a nice game. It, it really is a tablet, iPhone, I like a smartphone game that you can play on your PC as well. Like it's it's nothing amazing. Uh, it probably does lend itself a little bit better to a touch screen because it's a bit tricky to click on the bird and because what you got to do it's a side scroller and there's a bird flying with a message like a letter that you have to deliver at the end and uh, you click on the bird and you've got to drag it and it like gives you like a line and then when you let go the bird teleports to where you've let go mm. so and then you've just got to avoid all the uh, obstacles and stuff like that uh, the first few levels is quite intuitive, really easy to do, no dramas there, but then it starts to ramp up and it becomes bullshit hard. <laughs> really, 
really, really hard. And there's one thing that I've always been an advocate for. If you're going to make a game really, really hard, then the controls need to be really tight. Mm. Unfortunately, they're not in this game because on many occasions, for some reason on, on the PC that I was playing it on, you know how sometimes on the PC games you can make them full screen borderless? Yeah. Uh, or um, oh, I don't really know how to explain it. Like Sometimes it's, it's a, a borderless window and then sometimes it's full screen. When it's full screen, your mouse won't go off the side of the screen. But when it's... The window will, yeah. Window it will. What I found, I, I couldn't work out how to make it. Like The setting was there for full screen, but my mouse kept going off the side of the monitor. And when you drag off the side of the monitor, the, uh, yeah, the line that you've drawn from your bird disappears. Yeah, 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 yeah. That got me killed too many times. And another thing as well that uh, Snoogans uh, did his review and he made a comment about it, and I totally agree. When your bird collides with uh, an obstacle, like a spike or something like that, when he dies, he's still like a good, like, few, probably three to five millimeters on the screen away from it. So if just fewer you're getting ripped off, like half a second. La- look, sounds lag. It, it's kind of like, yeah, kind of like it's either lag or the hitboxes are out of proportion. Yeah, it's it's one of the two. I think it'd be I think it'd be the the hitboxes, hit boxes, considering how simple it looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is annoying because you think you've got, and when you get down to it, like a Twitch style game like this, it, you you get to the point where you like that half a second, like you can make a play. That, yeah. that that's a long time. And you're being robbed of that half a second from what you can see on the screen, and that makes it really hard and unfair. But anyway, you, you could once you play it enough, you can learn to compensate with it, so it, you can get around it. But uh, it's it's a it's a good challenging game. I mean, it's it's you know it's very simple. It's not going to have any sort of crazy background story that'll blow you away. If it does, it's hidden and no one ever saw it. But, uh, it's uh it's it's a good game. I, I think I'd play that. If I ever um, had to wait in a hospital emergency waiting room or something like that and uh, play it on my phone if it's available on there. I actually know if it is. I think it is. Anyway. As, long as, you, as long as you're not there for cardiac reasons. Yeah, no, because that <laughs> makes things worse. Yeah, Or uh, I might end up with a broken phone. But anyway, that's not a bad game. I think it's only like 3 $4, so it's pretty cheap. Pretty cool. Uh, moving on, picked up uh, a game called... Uh, you guys might have heard of it. I don't think it's very popular. Not very many people would know about it. Um, but I, it's new to me as well. So I, I started playing it this week. It's called um, Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> you heard of that? Sean, are you, are you there? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I think about it. Yeah. yeah, I think I've heard of it. You, you've heard of it? Yeah. Yeah, just there. Uh, I think somebody mentioned it in the, in the background somewhere. Anyway, I picked that up on the PlayStation 4 because you can buy it on there now. And um, I put probably about 45 to an hour into it and realized that um, you can only save at save points. And oh, I, that's cool. Yeah, and I didn't. <laughs> so <laughs> I lost all my progression. But luckily, with the PlayStation 4 version, it comes built in, like, hacked. If you press the right stick in, it gives you, it fills up your health. And gives you a special power for in your battles. If you press the left stick in, it makes the game three times the speed, which is pretty cool because when I lost that hour of gameplay, I got back up to where I was in about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're doing the initial train station part and then after climbing all the way up the top. Yep. That is really yep. slow. It is. So that, that click to uh, triple the speed thing is really appreciated. Uh, and if you click both of them at the exact same time, so click both sticks together, mm. all of the random encounters uh, uh, halted. Oh, what? You know, you, As in non-existent? Yeah, so if you walk around, like just walking, like yeah. Pokemon, I didn't realise it did this in this game, but like Pokemon, when you're walking through the grass, you get a random encounter. 
yeah. in Final Fantasy 7 it's like that you get random encounters where enemies will walk up to you and you'll start a, a turn based uh, fight but if you click both the sticks in together on the PS4 version that they don't that doesn't occur it doesn't happen only the like the scripted stuff will I mean it's good if you if you're just looking around and wanting to try stuff out uh, but it will hamp you will, it will slow you down leveling up because you won't be fighting as much yeah. I was about to say, we used to spend our first 10 hours of any playthrough on Final Fantasy VII just walking backwards and forwards, <laughs> looking for the random encounters. Yeah, that's it, just to get your level up and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you, well, essentially, with the, this version, you don't have to really level up too much. Cause you just, well, no, because you can refill your fucking health bar. <laughs> just click the right stick. Does it resurrect you? Oh, I don't know. I never died. <laughs> <laughs> It probably doesn't, um, but it's really good because um, for people like me that want to go through it and experience the epicness of the Final Fantasy story, but don't necessarily want to spend 200 hours, Which I can, is what it takes. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll be able to fly through the story, not worrying about leveling up and not worrying about uh, taking ages to go through bits and pieces and, and all that. So um, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, I'll give it a go. I, I really want to try it to see what the original was like. I've heard so much about, um, you know, the big epic story of it and uh, sort of leading up to, I think, next year the, the remake is coming out, like the full absolute... Have you seen remake. that? Yeah, it looks fantastic. Mm, it does. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do, it's the only thing that's disappointing is it's coming out episodically. That I mean, that can be good if it's scheduled right, but if it's anything like Telltale Games, it'll be shit, and I won't touch it till it's finished. So, because it takes, but they have made comments that each episode is a full-length game. What that means, I don't know. Probably ten hours. Twenty hours. Yeah, 20, 10, 20 hours of worth of gameplay. Yeah, which is uh, probably all right. But anyway, uh, I'll move on from that. So I haven't played too much of that yet. I was a little bit tired when I was playing it, but I'll get around to that maybe over the holidays. Uh, final uh, game that I've got to talk about this week is um, an absolute ripper. I bought it last night. It's only 1.5 gigabytes, so I was managed to play it uh, in the same night. And uh, what I did is I put this game on, cranked uh, so, uh, like some 90s uh, playlists in my headphones, and I just played and I just lost track of time and played for hours. It is a massive shit fight. It's just, the game is broken, which is its absolute best part. It's fucking stupidity, stupidity in a video game. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? No, I don't. Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost correct, except I did say I lost myself and played it for hours. You've up. I played Goat Simulator. <laughs> oh, nice. Get on. <laughs> on the PlayStation 4. Yeah. It's $13 at the moment on the store. I think that's all it is ever, but um, that's fun. That's just stupid fun. It's got mutators, so you can... There's one called the Blue Blur. So when you're standing still, you can just tap the triangle button over and over, and he spins like Sonic, and then just... <laughs> just he can connect um, a rocket launcher to his bat. Not a rocket launcher, sorry. A rocket jetpack thing and fly around. You can... Actually, I got into a fight with another goat in, that was in a ring. <laughs> and I kept fighting him enough that I got buff. Really? But, yeah. I turned into a, a goat that had all these muscles and shit because I beat this goat and I was all buffed up and shit. Yeah. Um, I went into a, a little cage that, you know, like a baseball practice cage where it has the, the thing that spits the balls out. Yeah. I went up to that thinking, oh, how do I activate this thing? Surely you can. And all of a sudden, when I touched it, it like landed on my back. Oh, and you started shooting shit like a tank? Yeah, I was running around with this thing on my back, tapping these buttons and just shooting um, baseballs at people. <laughs> <laughs> so is it like, Mini games that you got to select from a menu, or is it just an open world and you just whatever you wander upon, you can fuck around with? That's exactly what it is. It's you just go into the open world and you just do whatever the fuck you want. And it has like a list of things that you can do to check off the list, so it gives you oh, yeah. like little objectives. By no means does it the game give a flying fuck whether or not you do them. Everything is there from the beginning. Everything is unlocked. There's two maps. 
and you just go nuts, go do whatever you want. Multiplayer? And it well look, it did say something about um, two players. I don't know if it's um, local or or uh, online. I don't know. I, I, I didn't really. I'm, br- get it. I'm, bring, I'm bringing up the PlayStation Store while you keep going on about it, and I'll give you an answer. If it's multiplayer, this is going to be the ultimate game to stream come time for NBN with uh, super fast internet because it's it's a hoot. I, I I don't. I think I got about 30 seconds into the game before I got stuck underneath a ramp in like this little hole. But it was fun because I was just thinking, all right, I'm going to try and get out of this stupid hole. And I did. I eventually got out and it was just, everything's broke. There's a, there's a ragdoll button. So you can just, whenever you're running, just press uh, the circle button and you, your goat will just fall to the ground and ragdoll. It's, it's, (laughs) it's fucking stupid and funny. It's great. Best, best $13 that I've ever spent. It's absolutely great. I've got to, I've got to recommend it for a, a mad time waster. If because last night there was no one on PSN. Well if, well, if they were on PSN, everyone was ignoring me. So I was just <laughs> hanging out on my own with all my mates and uh, was listening to music, playing this, and it was a hoot. It was so good, real good. So I recommend it. How'd you go, Red? Did you find it? Negatory. There's nothing there about PlayStation Network and the requirements of uh, PS Plus, like they normally say. Okay, so that's probably not. No, but it says one, one to four players, so it must be all on the same split screen sort of thing. Local, yeah. There you go. All right. Well, uh, that's my week. Unless you guys have got any questions about that, I'd be very happy, Red, for you to start telling us about yours. No worries. Well, I've got one question for you just to finish off. What was more rewarding with the Telltale game, the story or the Platinum? The story. There we go. Marketing Manager 101. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon? Oh, yeah, okay. But no, um, look, the Platinum would have been more important if I wasn't, like, a thousand Platinums in front of you guys anyway. Okay, so now let's start my gaming week. And while we're talking about trophies, while we're talking about trophies, I clicked over to level 19 this week. What oh. level are you? 18. That's right. 18 and a half. I'm only, like, half a level behind you, buddy. How many Platinums have you got? 12. 17. Yeah, well, if you're going to throw stones, I'm going to deflect them like uh, <laughs> Captain America. Right, well, I started, well, well, I'm probably going to dabble back a little bit into last week's gaming, but it's going to be real quickly. But I um, decided to uh, go through my library, um, pick out a few things that I hadn't completed and, and start knocking off my uh, pile of shame leading into the new year. So I downloaded Lords of the Fallen, first and foremost, three sessions and i have completed that <clears throat> really um, yep wow and you still haven't finished the last of us no that's on the list it's on the fucking <laughs> how the fuck was that not first because because you hate the fact i haven't played it <laughs> and your job's on the line that's <laughs> all right i've got a couple of weeks to get it done I haven't renewed the contract for 2016 yet <laughs> <laughs> that's right i haven't counterclaimed it either <laughs> <laughs> Uh, moving on. <clears throat> I also downloaded Helldivers. Haven't played it yet. Want to play did something. Too. Did you? Yeah. Tonight? Alright. Done. I also downloaded How to Survive. I've already got it. Yeah, I've got that there. Because we had a plan to do that, that a few weeks ago when it was on the PlayStation Plus and um, I think, well, life gets in the way and so all these AAA titles that we got in the last three months. So, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm down for those. I played some... I probably played three or four hours of Black Ops while I had double XP prestiged again, so I'm up to prestige four now. That is pretty cool. Uh, King's Quest started that. I've done the first two levels, if you can call them levels on that, the first two main sort of things on there. Um, not bad. I, I, I don't mind it. Um, I like the like the whole Disney cartoony feel to it. It reminded me of the, the older Disney cartoons that we grew up with, the, that art style. You won't finish it. No, probably not. No. It, but like you, you sound exactly like me. Like it's good, but draggy. It drags on. Like it's not. It's interesting at the first, at the beginning, but it drags on, and it, there's not enough there to like. It's not like a Telltale game that'll. There's heaps there holding you, making you want to know what happens. 
Yeah, well, what, what, it's probably like the 12th installment into the King's Quest games, and if it's any, like, you know, like you were just talking about Final Fantasy, if you're in there from the original, that's probably just enough to get you through and play this multiple times to see what happens, but for someone coming in, a new King's Quest player, it does feel a little bit draggy, as as would Final Fantasy VII if you played that on normal speed, normal graphics for the first time. You know, you got a bit of a leg up there. Uh, I played and completed... Uh, Drake's Fortune, I'm up to chapter 13 on Among Thieves, so I'm going to knock those three games off as well as um, the last of them, cool. by, by, the uh, <laughs> by the next big release. But probably the biggest thing I've played this this week would be uh, Just Cause 3. Oh yeah. Fucking hot damn, so much fun. Um... Coming from, I played Just Course 1, which was really, really repetitive, and when we used to compare every open world game back then to the likes of Vice City and San Andreas and everything, so the graphics weren't too good. Just Course 2 improved a lot with the, the whole destruction, but Just Course 3, just the implementation alone of uh, the wingsuit, it's awesome. It's big, expansive, it's actually really pretty. Uh, frame rate drops are an issue, but... I read. Yeah. Calm down, you've already got your game of the year. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, I love it. I, I love a good, pretty open world game that you can it, it, they even said in the, the developer notes and everything when the game was first coming out that the the story never really meant anything. So all the it's all tongue in cheek and taking the piss and everything like that. It just it's ma- they're mainly like protection missions and go take down a base sort of thing, which you, you're just going to bloody well do in the open world. So I've just had fun liberating two-thirds of the map so far. I haven't hit the big section right up the top. Uh, the only thing that I really don't like mm-hmm. you, is it's got challenges. So you unlock different challenges, which it would probably be a sprint race or um, wingsuiting through wings or you know flying an aeroplane from A to B in a certain amount of time. You got to do those, and and you get a, a cog ranking between one and five, based on time or score. Mm. And you need you need those cogs in order to unlock uh, your mods, so a better grapple hook, better explosives, more ammunition, everything like that. But some of them are just really fucking hard and really fucking annoying. That sometimes you feel you've got to go without something that would make the make the game potentially a lot more fun. So you got to play it like how I would. How's that? Oh, yeah, well, no. you got to fucking red mode it if you want to get the most out of the game. No, but the... Oh, never mind. When have you hit? Yeah. What did you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how I normally play games. I go without all the great stuff because I just play the story. Yeah, and, and, and you can do it, but... That's the thing. It's not restrictive. I just I feel it'd be a whole lot more fun if you could unlock these things a bit easier. Do you remember me? Like, I've known you for a while now, and you know how I do stuff? Well, I don't know you. You're level 43 on fucking Fallout 4. <laughs> fuck's sake. Don't fucking play that card. <laughs> who is know you anymore, man. Yeah, it's like, who the fuck are you? I don't have no idea who you are anymore. I've got an announcement to make. I'm no longer Luke 1. I'm Luke 2. <laughs> Point oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, in a nutshell, that's, that's, that's my gaming fortnight slash week lovely all right good stuff uh sean you've got some big stuff to tell us about oh yes i do so uh i'll go through my games that i've been playing this week so a bit of uh black ops 3 some, some rocket league with red we did some the other night uh more battlefront and on that note happy nerd christmas to everybody so uh, oh, yes. star it's wars came out today it came out Looking today forward to that game. yeah Mm, uh, some AC Syndicate, still loving that. That's a really good installment in the, the Assassin's Creed uh, franchise. I'm, I'm really happy with that. So it does uh, enough not feel repetitive, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think they've done a done a heap to the repetitive. Uh, repetitive. <laughs> as as a single alone title, it does feel a lot like the other Assassin's Creed. But going from memory sequence one to two, you're doing something. But pretty much completely different and then three to four it's yeah progressing and the addition of, of the other two characters and you can kind of go either way with them so that's that's pretty cool as well 
Mm. Where, to, yeah. where, where do you think they're going to go next? Triplets. <laughs> Instead of twins. Yeah. <laughs> Three little pigs. Uh, fuck knows, man. It's it's getting closer to present day, isn't it? Splinter Cell. Assassin's Creed. Fucking Red Ghost Recon. Like, <laughs> you, you guys, I'm sure you guys agree, as much as you are enjoying it and saying it's fun and all that sort of stuff, it's pretty same same. Yeah, we need new IP for sure. I said that, but I said that after Unity, though. Syndicate was fun because it does feel like two years since a good Assassin's Creed game. Well, what it has been. This the argument is there that you know, like Call of Duty is the same every year as well, and all that sort of stuff. But throwing everything else aside, let's not compare it to anything else. Essentially, Assassin's Creed is always the exact same thing. Like, can, like I think it needs a massive overhaul. I still want Assassin's Creed, but I want a massive overhaul. Like. First person. First person, oh, like Far, I, Far Cry, I think. Oh, Far like, Cry. Like Dying Light. Yeah, cross with that, um, what's that Mirror's one? Edge. Mirror's Edge, yeah. You know what? That would drag me back in. Prototypes Not, there. It, it, because it's different, and it might just work, because I thought Dying Light was really good for that reason, like the movement and all that. But that might just work. Or even if somehow they made the game... Like, take it out of, like, ancient times. Take it out of history and, and reverse it and show us more about um, urban stuff, more modern things where you, you, you're you fighting Abstergo and stuff like that, and then maybe a little bit of the, the animus with the shit from the past. Like, they did that. They touched on that a little bit in, I think it was Assassin's Creed 2. Yeah, where you're at. But you, you play a good chunk of it as Desmond, whereas they've made it where it's just this weird, like truncated first-person walking simulator now. Uh, when you're when you're outside of the Animus, like with with the previous games anyway. So it's just a, I, I just want them to change it. Like they're, they're just playing safe, pumping out um, this this recent game. But I'm not saying it's bad. It probably is one of the better ones of um, of all of them that they've made, but I think it just needs it needs a flavour change real soon, because for me, and I'm sure I'm not alone on this, I, I'd have to have people agree that it's getting stale, man. Oh, I, I completely agree yeah. with you. It, it, it was a fun game. That, that, that On the flip side, it was a, a very fun game and rewarding Assassin's Creed title, but it is all the same. You've got a, a, a time, a, a, a period in the historical timeline where there was a dictator style overruling and they've just gone, right, well, that's the Templar, and now you're the good guys, and you're coming to do, take them out, sort of thing. It, it's, it yeah. is, it's the same story, one after the other, after the other, and I, I do concur in its... I, in, in its I love spaghetti bolognese, right? Mm. But if I came home and ate spaghetti bolognese every goddamn day for six months, I would fucking be sick of it, and I want something else. I love it, though! But can I? Can we have something different? Is, is that yeah. technology? <laughs> Lasagna, the textures are different. I, I think I would exactly. Say. It's still the same thing, but it's a different format, different textures, different. Oh, yeah, I like that. Good, good addition to the, my little analogy there, Red. But that's that oh. opinion on on the AC series. I think the the, the lasagna one was that uh, China one, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh well, they're coming out soon too. Bloody old Russia and India. Yeah. Keep going. Right. So uh, we'll keep on going. I bought Bastion. It's on sale. So started oh, yeah, playing like that. It's like crossplay. Straight. <laughs> <laughs> this this yeah. guy never turns his console off. He's crazy. Yeah. Uh, then. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's just cool, just the story and the way that it it gets narrated and stuff like that. Isn't it? Yeah, because I was walking along and. I, I went to the edge and I, I fell off the edge and goes, and then the hero fell off the edge and died. No, wait a second. And then you just respawn. <laughs> and you go to the end of the level and you're like, oh, I've got the collectibles. So you turn around and go back and see if you've got the collectibles. He goes, but he just wanted to make sure that he left <laughs> nothing behind. <laughs> and the soundtrack's me. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Good, just that chill out kind of um, soundtrack to it. But uh, also downloaded it on the Vita as well, so... I can just sit there and I, I think it, it uh, go well on the Vita so 
Yeah, me like too. Like dust it off and, and give it a go through that. Charge it up. Charge it up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw a post uh, that uh, Sneedy made the other day, and it got me interested in this game called Galcon 2 on iOS. So I downloaded that now on my phone and on the iPad, and I've it's killed the battery on my phone numerous times, and it's going the same way with the, the iPad, because it's so addictive. It's like a, a, a you start off with your planet, and you've got a certain amount of ships on it, and you've got to try and take over all the other planets before... Uh, the other team does and kind of wipe them out too so it's actually a, a multiplayer thing so you're actually playing against real people and just very very addictive for a simple simple game very addictive is it galcon g-a-l-c-o-n 2 galactic yep. conquest yep all right i'll get it i'll get it have a try yeah, You've yeah stopped. really really cool yeah it's good to play on the ipad as well because it's, it's just that uh, bit bigger of a screen and uh, it's just a lot easier, I find, to play through the iPad. Uh, okay, so next thing, uh, Snoogans and I last Thursday went down and celebrated the 20th anniversary of the PlayStation in Australia. So we got a, an invite down from Sony, and at roughly 8.45 in the morning, we boarded a ferry across to uh, Cockatoo Island, in Sydney Harbour, and that's where they held a press conference with uh, the, basically the the anniversary, so the 20th birthday of uh, PlayStation in Australia. And then uh, we got to have a play around on a, a few of the the newer things, in uh, specifically the the PlayStation VR, and uh, also got a a good look at uh, Media Molecules' new game, Dreams. Uh, they also had the the Uncharted 4 beta set up and Street Fighter 5 and just a few other little things that we'll we'll talk about a, a bit more uh, shortly. But uh, Patrick Lagana, who's the head of marketing for Sony Australia, uh, had the time to to sit down and have a chat with us about just the future of PlayStation. And in specific, I, I wanted to know uh, about PlayStation VR and uh, it's just a couple other like the streaming services and and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, Snoogans and I sat down with, with Pat and uh, we had a little chat, so here it is here now. What, what is it about PlayStation VR basically that people are going to lay their cash out for? Okay. Like, I think um, if you have a look at what current offerings are out in the marketplace, so I think with us, our unit is dedicated yeah. to VR. Yeah. That's all it does. It's a 100% built specifically purpose built for, for A for PlayStation 4 but also for a VR experience. What else are we going to see in that kind of homily? Look, it's probably a bit early to talk about um, you know the, the types of games apart from the games that we've seen because it is so new, yeah. right? And all the developers are getting their heads around um, you know what they need to do and what they feel will provide the best experience for their particular games. Yeah. So, um, I, and, and for that reason itself, I'm excited about it yeah. because I don't know what they're going to do. Because one thing's for certain is that they can't approach VR in the same way that they, provo- that they approach a traditional game. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a bit unknown, but it's really, really exciting at the same time because we yeah. don't know what they're, what they're going to do. I mean, we're going to see AAA experiences on it. Yeah, well, we've got, um, you know, our plat- with our platform, we've got that relationship with the developers that we've had for 20 years. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, 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 like I said, I don't know too much about, apart from the titles that we've shown you today, but from what I hear, from what I've seen, really excited about, you know, things like AAA titles, potentially making it out and incorporating some VR element in their, in their gameplay experience. Whether that's 100%, whether that's partial, we don't know yet. Yeah. But, um, kind know, of leaving it in their hands to yeah, provide it's, the experience. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, they know what they're doing. Brush yeah. that they can use to canvas, you know, their visions. Mm. Right? So now it's completely up to them. Any idea on, on release time frames or, or pricing or anything like that on it about? No, uh, nothing as yet. We've said 2016. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we don't have any more information at the moment to share with you. Yeah. But it'll no be 2016. Worries. Now, the boss is going to kill me if I don't ask this. Yeah. Are they going to announce Last of Us 2 next year? <laughs> I don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly, I don't know anything 
Honestly, don't worry, you're needing a bit. Yeah. Honestly. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, Lunch out at four, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be the, the first big one. Yeah, yeah no, that's bring it on. on. <laughs> it's just amazing. Have you guys played the beta? Yeah. The beta's crazy. Like, yeah. I... All right, there you go. Hey, Sean. Yes. Where'd you find that bloke? Was he just like the janitor or something? He didn't fucking know anything. <laughs> <laughs> so he's actually the, the head of marketing. I think they're being very, very tight-lipped now when it comes down to, yeah. to PlayStation VR and what's happening with it. Uh, the little things that I do know is that uh, when actually going through the, the PlayStation VR and, and development of the games and stuff, I think that they are going to be completely different things. We're not going to have integrated games with the the PlayStation VR, so you will have your AAA game, and then you'll have your PlayStation VR. De- dedicated AAA. VR titles. Yeah, just because of the simple scope of of what they are, and, and how big they're going to be, so uh, how they're going to fit them onto a media platform, how big they're going to be, they're really not sure of at the moment, just because of the whole, uh, it is so massive, the scope of these things, and it's, it's got me excited for what it's going to be like. So down there they had to uh, set up. So they had a game called Headmaster, which was uh, it was basically a soccer game. And it was like you were in a, a prison yard and the goals were set up in front of you and the, the balls would shoot out at you and you kind of had to head the balls into the goal or you know, hit targets or different stuff like that. And that was a pretty cool game to play. It looked like just like a, a mini game kind of thing, but uh, yeah, it was was pretty good fun to play. Just to get you that that scope and the the realism that when you sat down and you put the, the headset on your head, it was full immersion. Looking around, there was nothing. It just just seemed like you were actually there, and that was was really really cool. Uh, the next one that we got to play through was Battle Zone. Uh, it was the old Atari game, the old tank game mm-hmm. that they had, and uh, that's getting developed by Rebellion, so the guys that did the, the Nazi uh, zombie trilogy and uh, Sniper Elite and all that kind of stuff. So, oh, well, you know it's called the zombie Zombie. The zombie Zombie trilogy, <laughs> yes. And now this one here it was uh, played with a controller, so your controller did your your aiming and your your shooting and your moving around of the tank and all that kind of stuff and straight off the bat playing this it was like driving around in like a a hover tank so flying in this tank and like skidding sideways while you're shooting at other tanks and shooting at big turrets that were shooting at you and and all that kind of stuff was was really really cool the only thing i found with this was that uh you needed to be uh, it, it needs a bit of time to get used to the whole movement because yeah, maybe sick um, by the sounds of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah to, to, because I think that the main thing with the the VR especially is that when you're playing a game like a race car game or this this battle zone, the tanks and all that kind of stuff, there's no uh, forces on your body. Right. So when you're actually driving a car, you can actually feel uh, like a I mean, like the G-forces, if you will, against your your body. And uh, as you're moving around this fast and doing a, a corner, you're kind of expecting your body to to move with the corner as you would while you're actually driving a car and that. So that does take a little bit getting used to. And uh, the, the frame rate is amazing on them just with it uh, running there and that. So uh, it's just, it felt like you were really in there and really really driving the tank and all that but it just you didn't have those those natural forces on your body which kind of led you to to feel a little bit seedy at the start but you kind of get used to it if that makes sense hmm. yeah because well, yeah. most of the driving simulator ones they have those uh, hydraulic seats and everything in them hmm. when you put yeah. the vr use the steering wheel it's got the hydraulic seats that do move you around and everything like that yeah yeah, so that was that was really cool. Uh, having a chat with the, the guys down there that uh, were running the VR, it seems now that it, it is going to be fully wired. Yeah. So there's, there is no way that it, it can be... Uh, well, they can get the transfer rate from the console and there will be an actual specific dongle which uh, goes into the console as well to help with, uh, uh, with it um, coming out 
into the the headset so uh that seems pretty much like it, it will be there which uh then brings up the the whole thing of uh public liability and all those kind of stupid things that the people tripping over it and, and smashing things just like the wii when that first came out and had controllers yeah. going through tvs and all that kind the, of stuff the wii was just clumsy this one you're blind yeah so it's probably right that they'd be shitting themselves at gonna well, who has that for language? But okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a slip up. That's the first time I've ever done that, I think, on the show. Oh well, I'll chuck a beep in there. Uh yeah, I'm sure they're worried about people tripping over shit. <laughs> they can't see. There's wires. It's connected to a five hundred dollar console that's gonna get ripped off the, the shelf. Yeah. Uh, I'd be a little worried about that. Mm. But these two here that we played we were playing fully seated, so you know, uh, you know what they should do? It's probably a bit late, but what would have been a good idea if, if it doesn't have? Just a cheap little tiny camera, pinhole camera on the front of the, of the VR. That if, like a panic button, you could hit a panic button and it would turn the camera on and remove the game and then you could just see in front of yourself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. So that way you can see the time. You could see the floor. You could see your TV in front of you. You could see your feet. Just So if you're getting a little bit fucking like vertigo or like a bit weird, you can go, boom, hit the button. Yeah. Um, it'll turn off the game and display a camera in front of you as opposed to ripping it off your head. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you just quickly, I just need a moment to cap- gather myself. The game pauses. It cuts to the camera. You look around. You're like, okay, right, I know where I am. I'm going to back up a bit from my TV before I run into it. Yeah. Alright, I've got myself back together again. Press the button again, back into the game. Bring it up, would have been a good idea. Yeah. The also thing that, that I think would be a good idea with it was is make it with a quite a long cord. Oh no, it's, it, it probably if you, you're doing it because what what I'd probably do if I had it in the this kind of situation would be to actually run it up the wall behind the T V and hook it across the roof and have the cord just running down into the top of the, the headset from the roof. Yeah, so, so that, that there's no cords around me, no way for me to, to trip over or anything like that. And, and if you go too far away, like, rip your TV off the wall instead your console. Yeah, good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't bother me. Will it even, well, be, will it even be hooked up to your TV? No. Nah. No, nah, it means but behind... Yes, it, it, it actually... Oh. You know, while you're, you're playing the VR... It actually does play it through the TV, so people can actually watch it as well. Oh no, you read you said plug into the TV, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, 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 no. no. So it, it actually it will still display what you're seeing on the actual TV. Yeah. Yeah. So through the VR, so that, that's that's pretty cool. So all things aside, it it does look like it's going to be something pretty cool. And my whole uh, discussions further with with Pat involved things where uh just with it being is it going to be a viable a viable gaming platform for the money you're going to put out for it play the devil's yeah. advocate day mm. like i hope it's innovative i love the innovation i hope it's profitable and i hope it creates jobs and it creates entertainment but i'm, I'm probably too, i'm too old for it i'm just going to say i'm too old school i'm too sit down with the controller in my hand watching the screen i i, I don't think i could um I could cross across, go across to a, a platform of gaming like that as, so, as a full-time thing. Like, I do it once every now and again, but um, not like I sit down with you guys at five thirty and play till eleven o'clock. I, I couldn't sit inside a headset and play games for that long. I don't think. Uh, well, they, they've actually uh, put forward as well when when talking to them about uh, uh, what was it called uh, Battlezone. They've actually said that they, this is going to be fully focused on esports. Oh and really? I can see why. Yeah, and you know what? This would be an absolutely epic esports thing to watch. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I yes. concur. That, that's that's yeah, it's becoming more of a sport than it's more of a toll on the body as opposed to the thumbs and the brain. Yeah. So uh, next, uh, we also had uh, Michael Ephraim, who is the managing director of Sony Australia New Zealand. He got up at the start and had a, a quick chat to everybody just about the the past and the the future for for playstation so uh 
they, do, they went into a lot about the evolution of gameplay and, and all that kind of stuff, went right through the, the history, uh, came out that it's now uh, PS4 has its 30 million sales, as we, we uh, said the other week, and it is the fastest selling gaming console of all time. Uh, there's a, a big emphasis now on the social share and uh, share play services and they're, they're bringing more and always constantly trying to better the experience of the, the social and the, the share play and all that kind of stuff with, with PlayStation. Uh, the streaming services now, they've, they've said that PlayStation is the best entertainment uh, thing to to watch all your, your shows and stuff on. So we've now got... That's, uh, that's a bit biased to say that. <laughs> well... This is, is coming from him because in the end now, the, to, to back that up, you've got all of your, your ABCs and SBS, uh, Seven, all those kind of uh, backwards play uh, shows for demand. And then also now we've got Netflix, uh, Stan, and they've just announced Presto for, for PlayStation as well. So they've got all the streaming services available for it. Spotify. And, Yes, yeah, Spotify, uh, all the, the PlayStation movies, and the new PlayStation app on there as well, which can go through all the, the all the videos and all that kind of stuff from uh, Pal- uh, PlayStation Experience and and all that kind of stuff as well. So, so have they changed their motto now. This is for the players that like to watch TV, TV, yes. <laughs> TV, TV, <laughs> TV. They changed it. <laughs> Xbox, well, this is how it's done. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's in the end, this is a, a perfect way of doing it because when they first announced the PlayStation and they made it all about the games, this is where the gamers want to be, this is where you want to do things, and now they've brought it out as a full entertainment suite. And I think that that's very smart marketing. Mm. Oh, very good marketing. Yeah. yeah, so that's it. That's about it for the night. It was, it was really good fun and an and awesome night. Also, met uh, Bajo. And uh, Hex from Good Game, so that was uh, pretty awesome too. All right, let's uh, let's move on to this week's news. All right, first up in the news, uh, Star Wars 1313. You guys remember that? Yes, Merry Christmas to Star Wars fans. Yeah. yeah just happened remember the star wars <laughs> game that was teased looked like an epic mashup of like star wars and uncharted style gameplay uh if you remember that it's probably because it looked awesome yeah absolutely yeah well that it fell into um sort of development black hole i guess uh the patent died in 2013 and it just disappeared into nothingness and um has been in limbo ever since but anyway we've got some hope here it's not not definite or anything like that but it's a, a little bit of hope to hold on to uh there was an interview uh with slash film uh, and with uh, kathleen kennedy who's uh, the head of lucasfilm she revealed that the abandoned game may get a new lease of life after all she said we don't want to throw any of that stuff away it's gold And it's something that we're spending a lot of time looking at, pouring through, discussing, and we may develop things further. We definitely want to. We definitely want you to. Absolutely. It looks fantastic. So, Just uh, hopefully they can get someone like your naughty dog or someone to get behind it. It's not just all EA and DICE. Yeah, yeah. As long as it's somebody um, half decent making it, I reckon it'll be a good game because it really did present well, which is cool. All right, next up in the news, uh, Hideo Kojima looking at uh, a new dev company. So he's put a new team together. As long as you're not hiding under the same rock that Sean uh, hides all of his uh, unfinished video games under, then you might be aware that Hideo Kojima is leaving <laughs> Konami. Uh, yeah, he was there for nearly 30 years with Konami. Yeah, I'd believe that. Well, he basically, at one stage, he was Konami. Well, yeah, I didn't even think he was that old. But anyway, um, as of the 15th of December this year, that was his last contracted day. So that was uh, Hideo's last day. And uh, I would probably say the pricks didn't even throw him a party. Um, But anyway, uh, he's finally out on his own. Kojima has made his own uh, video game development company called Kojima Productions. And it's uh, he's staying independent. So it's his own company. 
which is really cool. And uh, he's uh, been in talks with uh, Sony, and they've made a partnership, and his first IP is going to be a Sony-timed exclusive. Metal Gear Flaccid. <laughs> That's going to be a uh, wooden... With a uh, geriatric snake. Wood, wooden cog flaccid. <laughs> <laughs> Something, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be for, it's a timed exclusive for the PlayStation 4, but it will eventually come out on PC. That was the comments that were made because the PC market's booming at the moment, apparently, if you say so. I didn't think so. But anyway, so he's, uh, he's collaborated with um, with Sony. <coughs> Punch out some cool games, games for them. He has essentially mentioned as well, do not hope that he will make another uh, Silent Hill or Metal Gear game. They are owned by Konami not Kojima Productions. So he won't be working on any of those. Until PlayStation buy them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah one... you know, PlayStation will buy them and go, uh, you made Metal Gear Solid 6 and it was shit and you ruined everything, so whatever you want, we'll just buy it off it and then give it to Hideo to do. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Nice. All right, Tom. You, sorry, just quickly, do you reckon you could get behind a Metal Gear Solid game that doesn't have a Contribution by Kojima, by uh, yeah, by Hideo. Oh, you know what? Have we did H- Kojima do Metal Gear Rising? No. Well, then no. It really, oh, you, you've had the opportunity to do so in the past, and you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who made Metal Gear Rising? One second. No, it says designers Hideo Kojima. Surely he was in the background and didn't have much. Oh, no, Ven- Revengeance or something. What was that one? Metal Gear Rising Revenge, yeah. Uh, that game was shit. So if it's anything like that, uh, but it's got his name on it. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll give it a go. But if it sucks, it sucks. If it's good, it's good. I'll, I'll admit it's good as anyway. So, yeah. Uh, Red, what's your news, buddy? Uh, well, I've got you to thank for this. Um, remember this game that you told me about was coming out and you should really check it out, Red, called Unravel? Yes. And then it, it kind of went away from, from our or my the front of my mind until it popped up on the PlayStation Store here a while a little while ago to um, pre-order. Pre-order, yeah. We now have a, a release date. <coughs> and it? it is the 9th of February for current-gen consoles and PC, but with EA Access, you'll get it a smidgen earlier. Well, it looks like I'll have it a smidgen earlier. I, I do really look forward to that game. That's a good game. Oh, it looks good anyway. It looks yeah, like so... That, your, your, your mashup of um, Little Big Planet and that old game that I keep bringing up, Cool Spot. Spot. Yes. So it's a game that involves puzzles based around using Yanni's own body as a tool for rappelling, swinging, tight roping, walking, and more. So I'm looking forward to it because uh, it's, it's nice and colourful and... I don't know. I'm probably getting a little bit soft in my old age. But mov- moving on. Um, Luke, you remember when we got the Taken King? Yes. Um, and you got that item where you could go in and you could instantly go to level 25. Yes, I never used it. No, I never used it. Oh, I let my son use it. Well, that's all nifty uh, uh, and everything so it means you really don't have to do like uh, vanilla destiny missions and everything like that you could just jump straight into the taken king and that's with the new patches and updates and everything that's how the game's directed so it works very well with all the the new taken king criteria but now you can go on your playstation store and after reading this i've done a bit of research and it is it's currently on our stores now you can go buy one of those things which was called the spark of light so It'll give you uh, some XP towards a subclass. You get level 25, and you get some um, weapon XP. You can now purchase that on the PlayStation Store for forty-five dollars. Oh, one of them. One. For forty-five dollars. Yep. I thought you were going to say it was like five bucks. Forty-five bucks, and don't make a mistake because you actually have to buy class specific. So don't go in there and buy a warlock one. When you wanted a fucking Titan one, it, it's it's yeah. oh, this is definitely weird. Sure, that's a mistake. Not that I want to say that you're you're you've made a mistake, but I just kind of want you to have made a mistake because that's no, just, no. Uh, he's a hundred percent correct. 
what, what what is it? It's called uh, what were they saying? It's the it's a package, a subclass boost and items to accelerate weapon upgrades, which you can buy from the fucking weaponsmith for for next to fuck all. If you if you want those little modules that um upgrade your your weapons quicker, this 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 is a whole new fucking low, man. That's Thank stupid. You. Look, I mean, if you buy the Taken King, I think you get one anyway. You get one, yes. But I don't know why you would use it. Look, I understand why people that have already been playing it would use it to get another character up to do I, raids and stuff yeah. with. But if you use that after buying the game for the very first time, why are you buying the game for the very first time? Why would you buy it to the only play half of it? That's right. And now you think about it. You bloody, we paid 70 bucks for the Taken King. One of the in-game items is worth $45. Yeah. Hmm. And you can pick up the Taken King right now for about 30 bucks on the PlayStation Store on sale. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the one with Destiny as well. It's not just... The oh, Destiny. that's the complete. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I understand using it, like I said, for people for raiding and that, but that's way too expensive. Yeah, absolutely. That's not absolutely. $5. Dollars. No, not when you can fucking sit there and play for two days. Well, look, when, when we played, right, and um, it started pumping out the gear left, right, and centre, I was an, I was able to, without breaking down anything, I would have had 20 sets, but I had enough gear to give across to my son's character when it reached level 20. He went straight from 20... Up, up with up near the 30s, just with the gear that I'd had in my vault. I, oh, oh, this is just just crazy. Hmm. It, it, 45 bucks. You could you could do that in a day. You could get up to level 20. It's a grind, yes, but you're you're there. That's, that's too expensive. Anyway, that's, um, just, all right. Just a quick little side note before we move on. Uh, I've just noticed because I've gone to the store to check that Trine 3 is out on the PS4. Mm. Oh, hot damn! Much. Heads up, it's thirty dollars uh, with if you PSN twenty nine sixty six or thirty two ninety five without PSN. Uh, heads up though, I haven't played it, but I've heard that it's about half the size, half the game of the previous one. So it's if not less. So yeah, there was a bigger bit of backlash here a couple of months ago, on there. It probably won't sell. It'll probably be slashed in half price wise. So wait a bit. I will. I want to. Oh, it'll be on um, PlayStation Plus next month. Well, either that, it might be. So, thirty dollars, from what I've heard, is too expensive. Sorry, continue. No, no, no. Right. Fucking, as we're all looking forward to coming into Christmas and everything like that, and putting last year's uh, Lizard Squad behind us, because apparently we don't have to worry about Lizard Squad this year. We got another bunch of dick bags. Fuck wit, man. Called the Phantom Squad. A real original dickhead. <laughs> they've, <laughs> they've come out on their Twitter account, and I've been through their Twitter feed to, to verify this to make sure it wasn't a bit of clickbait. But they're on there fucking spruiking off about how good they are. They've um, they've warned. It's not a threat. It's not a threat. Sorry. They've warned that PSN and Xbox Live is going down in the holiday season. So the 25th, 26th of December. And oh, that's it. <clears throat> they're going on the naughty list. Yeah, mm. fuck them. Yeah. Oh, no, they're not. I want to go over to their house and empty my sack all over them. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Where do you start? As, as I said to you, Red, the, like, it sucks. It's a, a shit thing to do. But good luck to them because the amount of single-player games out at the moment, like Fallout 4, uh, <laughs> uh, there's uh, Just Cause 3, other things that we could play. We don't need PSN. We'll just jump on Skype. Do what you like. Yeah, yeah, as you've got, we've got the one players. Uh, absolutely, I'm going through the Naughty Dog games, and fuck yeah, I've got heaps of games to play. Clear it a black log, so yeah, go for it. But I just still think it's a fucking salty thing to do. They, oh, it, they, they, they call themselves hackers. They're, they're on there and they're proud of being hackers and and all this. They're not fucking hackers. Anyone with the right amount, well, with enough money, can buy enough packets of information and send down a line to DDoS somebody. It's, it's, you, you're a fucking joke. It's pretend, pretend hackers. But yes, so you've heard it here. Just be warned that uh, PSN, Xbox Live, and possibly Steam will be going down. <laughs> Good luck with Steam. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're claiming success on their Twitter account. Just with Steam. Them. 
Steam, oh, yeah. the, the one that can have concurrent like 30 million people on it at one time playing at one it game. Down, it did go down a couple of days ago, if that's what they're claiming they did. Yeah. yeah well, they, what they're, they're claiming um, they hacked... They didn't DDoS, but they hacked Black Ops 2 to test their tools. They dropped uh, Black Ops 3 the other day. They've dropped Elder Scrolls Online, Grand Theft Auto Online. And um, now look out for the PSN, Xbox and Steam. Oh god, this is the next revolution of fuckhead on the internet. Alright, that said. What do you got, Sean? Uh, d- how much money have you, you got lying around for a, a new collector's edition? 45 cents. I've got 45 a bit cents. of bucks in the tin here. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, what would you prefer? Would you prefer two new consoles or... The Fuck. Dark Souls 3 Prestige Edition. <laughs> tell, me, tell me it's a six-foot fucking doll. $800. <laughs> the Dark Souls 3 Prestige Edition. Oh, I know it's what you It's just gone up on uh, the EB Games. They're obviously giving you a couple of tokens to level up to 25. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to play it. You just, uh, just put the disc in and they just give you a platinum. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, sold. What's in it? Uh, okay, so you get a, a 40 centimeter Lord of Cinder resin figure. I thought you were going to say a 40 centimeter TV. I was going to say, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a resin figure. Yeah. A 25 centimeter Red Knight figure. Collector's boss box metal case. Three iron on patches. Wow. That's that. If you take the iron on patches out, you can uh, go for. Seven hundred and ninety nine dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, well, they can go on my uh, blue denim acid wash uh, vest that I've got yeah. from nineteen eighty three. A A four hardcover art book, a soundtrack, which is probably digital. Digital. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually it's, it's actually a CD, you know, because we all um, use CD players now. And a Dark Souls three game as well. You get the game with it. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, eight hundred dollars. Is it? And as I like, it's got to, it's got to do with the figurine, surely, and the art book. I say is where your money is. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so the figurines do look really really cool, but eight hundred dollars. No. I'll just I'll just stick with the standard things. Yeah, <laughs> fifty nine buck pre order. Yeah. <laughs> it, wow, that's that. Yeah, is. and I, I can just, just oh. when dreams come out, I can just sculpt the figurine and three D print it. <laughs> just print it off on your three D printer with the file they provide. You can actually, yeah, you can buy a three D printer and print your own <laughs> statue for that. Amount. Less than I. <laughs> what well, what's uh, what's next? That was it. Picked up the slack. Oh, that's right. That was the only one, wasn't it? All right, beautiful. In that case, I'm going to bring up the script so I know what's going on next. What's that sound? All right, we didn't have what's that sound last week because we had our game of the year show, so we're going to have to backtrack for a week before. We had, uh, actually, let's play it. Boom. Headshot. And Red was savvy enough to cheat and got that one right. <laughs> I did not, because no. if I did, if I didn't argue the point there, it would have sounded well, I would have sounded guilty <laughs> after, my, <laughs> after my chuckle. <laughs> uh, also, Andrew Roy, Roy Boy, he got that correct as well and scored himself a free game. Congratulations, you were awesome. I'm better though. So, how about <laughs> this week's sound? <laughs> Shut <up>, Red. <laughs> That's unscripted. <laughs> You're so vain. <laughs> I'm not vain. I don't think I'm that good. Just better than everyone else. So, do you want to hear this week's sound? Have a- Shit. That was really fucking loud in my headset, but oh. that's an easy one. Yeah. Do it again. <laughs> I know what it is. Can I turn it down? Oh, I know you guys know what it is. It's an easy one for the end of the year so everyone can feel special for Christmas, just like I feel Sean is all the time. Yes, how confident are you guys you know what it is? Pretty 
don't don't wait for me to answer it. I fucking know it. I I, I recognise it, but I don't know it. Oh, you don't know? Oh, oh when when Sean gives the answer, I'm going to go fuck. Of course. Oh, yeah, 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 very likely, but you don't know it. No. That that's so bizarre that I'm going to start you off on minus one on the rapid fire quiz. What is it? <laughs> this is not when you level up and yes yeah. yes not a no but I'll give you a which one is it easy I didn't play that online what I started my online days on so you didn't play any of the previous ones I played all the campaigns and the and everything but nah never multiplayer huh? I, was, I was too poor for the internet back then Ah, fair enough. All right, no dramas. Well, there you go. And I, and, and I was a chef doing fucking spastic oh, hours. Yes, of course, of course. If anybody at uh, anybody at home thinks they know what this sound is, then uh, message us and on our Facebook page. Tell us what you think it is. If you're correct before, I don't know when, before Christmas or whatever, then uh, I'll send you uh, a free game. Because obviously there's not going to be another episode until uh, next year. You can't really leave it open. The thousands and millions of people not answering he'll be disastrous we'll run out of prizes anyway send us the thingy if you know what it is we'll give you a prize happy days but that's uh that's what's that sound that's the last what's that sound for this year all right so let's uh let's move on to the rapid fire quiz oh i've got sweaty palms oh you're a bit nervous red there's a bit of feeling in this one yeah yeah I've, ne- I've, I've never been in them <laughs> Yeah, well, this is a decider, man. This is the difference between you being to, able to um, brag about it until episode 109 oh. next year, where, where obviously we'll start again from scratch next year, but this is the decider. It's either going to be Sean or it's going to be Red. Sean? <sighs> Sean? Yes. Is it going to be you? Of course it is. Good attitude. Red, is it going to be you? <sighs> yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> All right, let me just write your names here so I can get your scores. Test your buzz. Minus one. <laughs> oh, you're that confident that you still want it. <laughs> no, rules are rules, Fred. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Red. All right, so the buzzers are all good. All right, are we ready? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Sorry. Just just put your lung down on the chair beside you there, and we'll get going. So, all right, you, you good? You want to go? Yep. Let's do it. All right, no pressure. And we'll start the ticky tock timer now. Question one, name a class or character from Borderlands 1 or 2. Red. Bonk. Red. Tank. Uh... That's wrong. Sorry. Question number two, what is a Tetramino? <laughs> Sean. A Tetris piece. Yeah, well, it, well, it is, but I want you to tell me what a Tetramino is. A Tetris piece. Uh, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> wrong. Question number three. What Nintendo console was released before the Wii? Donk. Sean. Uh, the... Uh, 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 wrong. Sorry, it was 64. Question number four. It's wrong anyway. Who published Far Cry 4? Don't. Red. Sean. Ubisoft. Correct. Question number five. What is the name of Luigi's evil counterpart? Red. Don't. Red. Waluigi. Yeah, that's close enough. Correct. Question number six. How long has Sony PlayStation been around? Don't. Oh, shit. That was a stalemate. We'll come back. 20 years. <laughs> four days. <laughs> <laughs> Question number seven. What did the analog button do on the DualShock 2 controller? Red. Red. Catch monkeys. We need to escape. <laughs> the analog button? Oh, fuck. <laughs> the analog stick, because it was the very first game to use analog sticks. I'm wrong. Yep. Uh... Question number eight. Before wireless controls were a thing, how many controller ports did the Xbox, Long. original Xbox, have? Sean. Four. Correct. Question number nine. What was the first gaming company to provide an online service? Dong. Sean. PlayStation. Incorrect. Question number ten. What is the default name given to the main playable character from Final Fantasy 
Seven. Red. Red. Cloud. Cloud is correct. This one actually has an extra point, Red. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh Uh-oh. Good job. Extra point if you can tell me his last name. (laughs) I was going to go Atlas, but I watched that movie the other night. Uh, Nah, fuck no. Uh, (laughs) Ah. All right, well, uh, that's, that is all the questions, but there was a stalemate on question number six, so I'm going to have to give you guys a tiebreaker, which I haven't prepared for. Okay. Uh, all right, so, yeah, I haven't got a, a tiebreaker handy, so I'm going to have to make one up on the fly. So um, what can I do? This is really hard to do on, on the fly. Let me look around in the room for some inspiration. All right, I've got a question for you. Give me the name of the main character from Dead Space. Oh. Take as long as you like. It's a tiebreaker. We kind of need... Hmm. No, Googling. <laughs> oh, I can hear you clicking, you cheating bastards. What? I, I don't know who it is, but someone's clicking. And it's probably Sean. Dong. <laughs> No, nah, nah, I'm not. <laughs> question's gone. All right, you're going to have to answer this one straight away or you, or it's out. Give me the name of the main character from Watch Dogs. Red. Red. Aiden Pierce. Aiden Pierce is correct. <laughs> that's it. That's that's the, the rapid fire quiz. That's the last one for 2000. Is, is, and... Isn't there another tiebreaker because he started on... Minus one. <laughs> oh, no. Gage, get back to us with that. <laughs> Sean? Yeah. You get minus one for being an arsehole. For whinging! <laughs> hey, I, I was being an arsehole by saying he had minus one, but I wasn't actually going to uphold that. That's not fair. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, especially with, um, the... With, with so much on the line, it's the last one, it's the tiebreaker for how many, who's won what. So no, I wasn't going to actually hold that up. Let's go through the ones, well, we'll go through them all and see the few that weren't um, answered. Uh, Red, the first question, name a class or character from Borderlands 1 or 2. What did you say, Tank? Tank, that's a class. That's a siren. <laughs> oh, you get to say Berserker. Yeah, because there's Salvador the Gunzerker, Zero the Assassin, uh, mm. Mate of the Siren, Axton the Commando, Gage the Necromancer, Krieg the Psycho, Mordecai the Hunter, Roland the Soldier, Lilith the Siren, and Brick the Berserker. No tank. I was very surprised that you didn't get that one. Probably just a mistake in your answering, but whatever. Merry Christmas. I love you. Question number two. What is a Tetramino? I wanted what it actually was. Yes, there are Tetraminos in Tetris, but a Tetramino is a geometric shape composed of four squares. That's not a gaming question. Yes, it is, because that's what's in Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> question number three. What Nintendo console was released before the Wii? I didn't give it to you, but you answered the Nintendo 64. It was incorrect anyway. Is it the uh, DS? It's, it's the... No. Uh, that's not a con- well. It's a handheld console, but I was uh, going for the GameCube. Yeah, uh, yeah. The GameCube was released in two thousand and one, and the Wii in two thousand and six, directly after it. Uh, who public fa- who published Far Cry Four? Ubisoft. Sean, you got that one. What is the name of Luigi's e- evil counterpart? Sean, you said Waluigi or part thereof. Uh, question number six: How long has the Sony PlayStation been around? It's twenty years, but you guys buzzed at like the exact same time, so. I didn't feel right um, given that one way or the other. Question seven, what did the analog button do on the DualShock 2 controller? Red, what did you say? Something about monkeys? <laughs> Catching apes on Ape Escape. <laughs> that was the first thing I ever done with the dual stick. <laughs> right. Do you know what the, the analog button did? Did it turn the sticks on and off? Well, it was a trick question because I would have accepted fuck all. <laughs> I would have said it turns the little analog light on. Light turns the light on. <laughs> I would have accepted that as well. Because that's pretty close to all it fucking did, is turn that light on and off. Because if the game didn't allow it, that button did nothing. It literally yeah. just... T- the light would go on and off, but the controls wouldn't work. What it was essentially meant to do was switch between the D-pad and the the 
the sticks. Thumb sticks. Yeah. There were very few games that allowed that. It did nothing except turn the light on and off. So the correct answer that I had here was fuck all. <laughs> but I would have accepted turn, of those. Turn on LED. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, question number eight. Before wireless controllers were a thing, how many controller ports did the original Xbox have? Uh, uh, Sean, I think it was too late, but you chimed in with a number? Four. Four. Four I think it was late. I got that. No, you took forever. No, I didn't. No, it was another one. He took forever. No, he was pretty quick on that one. So that one you got, was it? Yeah. Oh, my bad then. Sorry, I'm usually pretty good with this sort of stuff. My bad. Uh, yeah, it was four. Uh, question number nine uh, was probably this one. On th- oh, no. Who cares? Moving on. Question number nine. What was the first gaming company to provide an online service? Sean, I think you said Sony? Yeah. Sega. Oh, was really? It was actually the Sega channel back with the... Uh, the Dreamcast, Sat- Sega Saturn, oh, Saturn. Oh, Sega Saturn. Saturn. I believe it was even earlier than that. It might have been on something else. Anyway, I don't have that information here. But yeah, it was a long time ago. It was, it was uh, shit, and it was only in uh, the states. What is the default name given to the main playable character from Final Fantasy VII? Red, you got a point for saying Cloud. The extra point would have been for his last name. His last name was Strife. Ah, yes, of course it is. Cloud Strife. So. The winner of the Rapid Fire Quiz, episode 108, and also the winner for 2015, Red, put your hand in the air, it's you. Congratulations, Red. (laughs) (laughs) Something tells me, though, that Sean is going to come back with a vengeance in 2016 and be a force. I said there was only five there. That What's means that? I can beat you, beat Red like fifty to two next year. Well, that's possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's probable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, we only started doing the the rapid fire quiz quite competitive like this. Um, yeah, a few weeks ago. So next year it'll be a little bit of a different story. But anyway, congratulations to Red and uh, well done, Sean. You uh, were runner up. <laughs> you come okay, second. second. Certainly two of you get it. All right. Um, well, that's it for Rapid Fire Quiz. Let's move on to Sean's must-play games. Okay, so with the 20 years of PlayStation this year, I thought I'd change it up a little bit and uh, run through a quick timeline of PlayStation uh, in Australia and all the awesome games on there. Now, these are all must-play games, especially if you're a, a PlayStation fan. So... Uh, back in 95, the PlayStation launched in Australia, Europe and the USA. The rest of the world comes shortly after. 1996 saw Resident Evil, Crash Bandicoot, Tomb Raider and all these start coming out on, on PlayStation. So it was cool. 97 had Parappa the Rapper, Final Fantasy VII came out there. So it's 18 years old now. Uh, the Superstar Soccer come on the PS1 and the Analog the dual analog controller, which we were just talking about before. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then 1998 came, and we saw the, the first instance of Gran Turismo, Spyro the Dragon, and Grand Theft Auto, the top-down view. And by this time, it had sold 50 million consoles. Uh, 1999 saw the start of Silent Hill, which is awesome. Right. Driver, which is another really, really cool game on there. And Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, was uh, released, and uh, they announced at E3 that year that the PlayStation 2 was coming. So in 2000, the PlayStation 2 came out. Uh, launch lineup had uh, Tekken Tag Tournament, SSX, Time Splitters. Uh, Naughty Dog joined in with the, the party in 2001 with, uh, what was that, Jack Ratchet. and Daxter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that. Uh, Ratchet and Clank coming in 2002. And, uh, yeah, London uh, was recreated. So one of the first big open world ones was the Getaway. And uh, they said at the end of 2000... Yeah. That's fucking sick. Yeah. And uh, so by the end of 2002, 40 million uh, consoles had been sold for the the PlayStation 2. Uh, PSI came, so the PS2 iToy where you got to use your, your motion to, to wipe away the 
clean the screen and all that kind of crap coming out in 2003 and uh, the network adapter so they first went live online in 2003 uh, PSP come on sale in 2004 2005 one of favorite game series come out and that was uh god of war was released uh also shadow of the colossus and at the end of 2005 100 million consoles had been sold Fucking hell. yeah uh playstation 3 launched in japan usa in 2006 uh 60 gigabyte hard drive which had the the blu-ray also had backward compatibility on it as well with the original release of the 60 gigabyte and uh the online gaming came through with the, the PlayStation Network and the PlayStation Store came on live as well. Uh, 2007 was when it got released in uh, UK, Europe, and I think we got that 2007 as well. Uh, awesome lineup come out on it. Motorstorm, Resistance, Fallen Man. I'd really like to see another Resistance on the, the current generation. Not many people are a fan of it, but that's something that I'd really like to see. And Nathan Drake debuted in 2007 with Uncharted. Uh DualShock 3 wireless control was introduced in 2008 uh, with the six axis. So uh, Little Big Planet, Motor Storm, Pacific Rift and Resistance 2 all used them. Uh, Resistance 2 also came out with a the 3D. So you could actually see the bullets whizzing past you and all that kind of stuff. It was really, really cool. Uh, 2009 got the PS3 Slim came out, 120 gigabytes. Uncharted 2, Infamous came out and the PSP Go also came out as well in, in 2009. Uh, PlayStation Move 2010 and PlayStation Plus was introduced. So that was when we started getting all our free games and uh, the access online and all that kind of stuff. You never used to need PS Plus to be online on the, the PS3, but since it's come to, to PS4, you need PS Plus to be online and play, which is kind of a good thing because the servers keep... Um, well, they keep the servers live and, and really... <laughs> Put on there <laughs> and, and, and to, and, until Christmas time. That's the same yeah. Uh, 2011, Motor Storm Apocalypse, Kill Zone 3, Infamous 2, Arkham City, Uncharted 3. Big year 2011 was on the PlayStation. 2012, Grand Theft Auto 5, and Luke's most favourite game of all time, The Last of Us, came out. Uh, yes, so. I just got to make a mention when you were talking earlier today. You said in the uh, in that interview with uh, Patrick uh, yep. Lagana. Yeah. You obviously don't know me very well. I don't want there to be a, a Last of Us two. You would have been what? stoked if he said there wasn't going to be one. What's that? You would have been stoked if he said there wasn't going to be one. Yeah, I don't want one. You don't want one. No. No. It's a, it's a masterpiece. Don't ruin it. No. Like no. Universal Soldier. I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Uh, 2013 PlayStation 4 launched November 29. Uh, new controller, DualShock 4. <laughs> I was there. Uh, 2014 uh, becomes a, the fastest selling console of all time. PlayStation TV launches and uh, Destiny nope. Watch Dogs, <laughs> Last of Us Remastered and... Um, all that kind of stuff coming out. 2015, we've seen Uncharted, Nathan Drake collection, and uh, that's ahead of like the Uncharted 4 release next year. Uh, also, things like Bloodborne and all that. It's, it's going to be pretty epic uh, well, you've coming up. have gone through all of the PlayStation 4's releases by telling us all the games from 20 years. Because <laughs> they're all... <laughs> I was going to say earlier when you're saying for the players and then the PlayStation TV, it's, it's the console of ports and remasters. Mm. <laughs> we've got some pretty good like lineup coming up, though. Oh, we've got some quality like, now, but it's just going to be highlighted in the next couple of years when they really re- realise the potential. Mm. So yeah. also got the, the PlayStation VR coming out and... Uh, Another thing I was talking with uh, Michael Ephraim, the, the head of, of Sony Australia, I was just saying, you know, the, he really wanted to know about the experience with the PlayStation VR and how we, we felt about it and how it was good and the immersion in it and that. And uh, as we've discussed on here before, they need to put it on people's heads. If you're going to sell it, it needs to be put on people's heads so they, they actually know how good it can be and if it's actually going to be worth the, the money uh, laid out on it. So... 
yeah, that's a the little look back on on PlayStation over its last twenty years. All right, uh, Red, last one for the year. Give us a shout, buddy. Shout! Shout! Right, this shout goes out to Snitty Snoogans, Cavan, Reprimere, Jackson, Weeksy, Nick, Sean, Luke, and fucking me. <laughs> With with a with a footnote and a special mention to Rusky Big Musky because as far as the podcast goes, every uh, week I see a retweet, comments, questions, and uh, just general input to this form of Aussie game as the medium that is the podcast. So a special mention there to you, Big Gun. Thanks very much, and a very Merry Christmas to you, Carver. And um, yeah, so a shout out to the Age Crew because it wouldn't have been this year with everything that we've had without the the. Um, collective efforts so there you go lovely good stuff yeah thank you very much to everybody and uh, a very special thank you to uh you two blokes uh sean and red um you guys are most of the time very very good to work with sometimes <laughs> you're a massive pain in the ass and you give me the shits but i'll put this on record and on the podcast and it'll be there forever because it's going on the internet as much as I whinge and as much as I complain in the background, in the behind the scenes and crack the shits, when I when it comes to it, I, I don't think I'd want to be doing this with any anybody else. You guys are you guys are awesome. Thank you very much. Cheers, man. We appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you for all your, your work that you put in doing all the editing and putting up with it and the extra editing for my stupid comments and <laughs> extra editing for my swearing and <laughs> oh, I dropped the C bomb. This, this, this. Yeah, episode. you did. <laughs> you can't say that. Yeah, I know. I <laughs> bleep it out. There you go. We actually got a comment on our uh, YouTube uh, feed for the, I the love podcast Rippin. last week <laughs> as well. I love Reprimy <laughs> from Brady. Yes, yeah, so, that was random. <laughs> did we talk about Reprimy in the show? Or was it just rando? Just, he, just that person loves him. Yeah, I guess so. Must do. Oh, he's a good bloke. I I, I like him. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, do him I'd do him once, for free. Oh, right. Just for the experience. For free? And then it's going to cost. Yeah. <laughs> you or him. But, no, he, I need Uncharted 4, man. I need 800 bucks for Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, well, let's, let's bring this last episode to a close and I guess we'll... Say goodbye. Last show of the year. It's a bit, a bit sad, but do you think, Sean? Mm, well, now that we're at the end of our last show for this year, episode 108, please take the time to like us on Facebook. If you don't, you are getting put on the naughty list and Santa won't buy you presents. www.facebook.com slash AussieGamers2012 or search for Aussie Gamers Express in the search bar up top. If you go on Twitter... Go to at AussieGamers12 where you'll get all our latest news and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Twitch, AussieGamersTV at twitch.tv is where you can all find all, all of our uh, raging and gaming sessions on there. Uh, Aussie Games Express is on YouTube, so go on there and you'll get full access to our gaming video. Vault, free access as well. Come on. Not much things out there free these days, so Actually, get on to I'm top, yeah, They have to pay. <laughs> Do they? It's eight hundred dollars of you. <laughs> <laughs> for the next three for, people. That's for you. <laughs> yeah. You're oh, all get a yeah, car. Lots of now. iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn Radio is where you can download this podcast directly to a device of your choice. Just search Josie Gamers Express. That's the best way to do uh, to listen to this podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, leave comments, all that kind of stuff. That'll help us get back up there and trending again. Um, Oh, the blog! www.ozgamersexpress.com.au is where you'll find all our latest news pieces, uh, reviews, all that kind of stuff on there. And PO Box 130, Cranebrook, New South Wales 2749 is where you can ship all of the pre-orders for the Dark Souls Prestige Edition. One for <laughs> Luke 1, one for Red, and one for Thorncliffe. That would be really awesome. All right. All right, um, that's it. That's our show. It's done. We're closed. We're finished. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone, or whatever it is that your faith says at this time of the year. Um, have a happy new year. Be safe during the new year's season. Don't drink too much alcohol. Well, 
fuck, do what you want, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not your father. <laughs> <laughs> what are yeah, you guys so, doing uh, business? Drinking too much doing? alcohol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Doing playing, one, to... playing one player games. Yeah, because it's together. <laughs> But the good thing is, on Christmas Day, we'll still be able to play because it won't be Christmas in the States yet. That's right. It's Boxing Day that'll be fucked for us. Which is when I'm probably more inclined to play games. <laughs> well, no, I'll be playing it on Christmas just to get away from the family. Oh, who would have thought? Seven and a half minutes of pleasure. Now I've got to dedicate a whole fucking day to my kids. <laughs> Seven <laughs> minutes and you've got three, three. kids. That's right. Wow. I did a little bit of math there. That's fast, dude. <laughs> Fuck off. Two and two minutes and, what, 20-odd seconds? <laughs> if I was to be consistent, I was drunk one night. <laughs> so that one... Uh, that's, that's five minutes and the other two yeah. are a minute each. Yeah, that explains it. Lewis's. <laughs> there you go. All right, everybody listening, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you guys sticking with us. And if you're new, stick with us. Check us out next year as well. But you can check out uh, all our previous shows uh, from the year and the year before and et cetera, et cetera, as we've already discussed on iTunes and blah, blah. Thank you. See you later. I've been Luke One. I've been Thorncliffe. Merry Christmas. And to the atheists, have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Red and I'll have a good day. Oh. <laughs> hey, just quickly, I got, a, I got a Christmas joke that I heard the other day that was hilarious. You probably heard it, but I love it. The guy went to the shop to buy a Christmas tree, and the guy selling it to him said, are you going to put that up yourself? <laughs> he goes, no, you sick fuck. I'm going to put it in the living room. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. See you later. Peace.